we doing? Uh, well, I'm going to chop some wood up. Um, we're going to use this beautifully sunny day in Bangor to um, replace our fender step, which is the worst for wear. These fender steps are very, very good, but the problem that they have is I think they're made for a more occasional use than what we do. But I think they're made for boaters who come on a weekend, pop up and down a couple of times. That's it. They go away for the rest of the week. We're here all the time. We're up and down that fender step like 20 times a day. And I think we've just subjected it to the equivalent of about five or 10 years of wear. And it's basically split up the middle. So it's got to be replaced and we're going to replace it with a wooden one. So uh, what wood have we bought? Uh, this, is, this is wooden decking. It's the stuff you put outside and you have your barbecues on. Uh, it should be reasonably weatherproof because it's meant to be outside. It will get covered in varnish and other goodies like that. Um, this one plank's about £10. The fender steps are about 50 So we're going to give it a go. We burn through a fender step about once every 18 months. This is the third one we've had since we owned the boat. And they're good. We like them. It's great to have them. They pack away conveniently. But we are just too heavy a user to get much time out of them and 50 quid every 18 months just to replace it is a bit much so we're going to try a wooden one and see how it goes As you can see that's it on the boat now um, it's hanging at about the right angle where I'm, f I'm fairly pleased with that um, there's a few adjustments need doing I have to take it all apart unscrew everything uh, get everything epoxied and varnished and all put back together again and then the old fender step we're going to cut it up into pieces and we're going to use it to pad the inside between the boat and the step um, so it'll live on for a while longer but I think it's worked out about as well as I expected so I'm quite pleased with that now all I've got to do is put all this stuff away. Well, I'm here at the chart table because uh, Beverly and I want to uh, go out later today. Beverly has already um, taken the bubble wrap off the windows. It's great having the bubble wrap on the windows because it really does cut condensation. But it means that the deck is, you have to get rid of it all before you go out. It's just ridiculous, the amount of ropes. But uh, I'm clearing the chart table, but it just brings me to one of our viewer questions. And that was to do with what do we use for Anchor Watch. Now on Salty Lass, we have got four different items that can be used for Anchor Watch. Um, my mobile phone, which I have lost already. There you go. Uh, my mobile phone, um, we have uh, a B&G chart plotter upstairs, um, we have Charlotte downstairs which is a uh, Garmin uh, little chart plotter and we also have a Garmin GPS indicator. Now the GPS indicator is used because our radio is one of the older ones so it needs to have a GPS fix but it can also be used for anchor watch. So when you consider uh, what to use for anchor watch on your boat then um, try and use the same criteria that Beverly and I do and the first one is accuracy how accurate it is uh, because you're going to be uh you need to monitor sort of like 50 meters to 60 meters then you need your accuracy to be high 
Now, um, with your phone, I'm afraid to say um, the accuracy can be quite low. Um, there's a circle of um, confusion uh, when they're trying to decide your location. So for that reason, the mobile phone is not great for Anchor Watch. Also, uh, when Beverly and I were using our mobile phone um, for our location, uh, we were going up and down the Mersey. And what used to happen as we went up and down the Mersey was we'd be going down the Mersey and then as soon as there was a road nearby, the location would jump and um, it would jump to the road just because that's where it expects you to be. So, um, as I say, we've not used the mobile phone. However, I think if you're out at sea and you've got nothing else, it's a great thing to have and it's a great backup. But for an anchor watch, it's not accurate enough. The next criteria is location. That means that your anchor watch needs to be in with you where you are sleeping or you are. We have got an anchor watch on the B&G chart plotter upstairs, but it's not very, uh, it's not where we are. The other issue that we have with that particular one is audibility. The, it doesn't have a sound. It, it just sort of like bleeps a little message on the thing and the and the sounds are ridiculously light. You read, need something that's going to wake you up. So it has to be audible. So for that reason, the PNG is out. Um, however, Charlotte is in where we sleep. This is where we are. So this is a great location. But also we also have the, um, the Garmin GPS in this location. So we do have two. So now we've just got to decide which of these two we want. Another criteria is power consumption. What is going to use the least power consumption? Now the Garmin GPS, because of the screen, should be taking the least power. However, because of the way that we've got it wired, when we have the uh, Garmin on, the radio is on, the all the chart plotter upstairs is on, all the circuitry is on, because um, it's wired into the same circuit as all our other instruments. Because if we're sailing, we need a location on our radio, and that's why we have it wired that way. Alternatively, what we've done with uh, Charlotte, our little um, Garmin GPS, is we have a single circuit which is dedicated just to this little chart plotter. And that means that when we're at anchor, we only have one device that is on. And that really is important because if you're running on batteries, which of course you are when you're in a anchorage, you need to keep your power consumption as low as possible. The other advantage to little Charlotte is it has a screen you can see what is happening and then you can assess for instance we've had it where the alarm has gone off but that's because when we started our circle for our anchor watch we weren't in the center of the circle we were actually at one side and we'd gone to the other side just because of tide so you can assess it and that's the nice thing about having a screen so that's why we use charlotte on this boat for our anchor watch. So to wrap up, when choosing your anchor watch, then you need accuracy, good location, audible alarm, um, low power consumption. A screen is useful because it allows you to assess the situation. But the other thing I would recommend is I would also recommend you use an anchor watch when you're on a mooring ball because mooring balls can drag. Other things can happen with your mooring ball. So I would also recommend an anchor watch then. So Bev, now that I've got your chart table all clean, what are you doing? Making it all messy again. <laughs> um, 
We haven't taken the boat out for months, literally months. She's been sitting in here. We spun around a while ago and she's been staring in ever since. I think it was sometime before Christmas and it's now like middle of January, end of January. Um, we're hoping to go out today. Uh, so what we're going to do is just check the bottles on life jackets. Uh, you should always give them a quick check. Um, it's a little the worse for wear, but the thing you're really looking for is to make sure that it is actually just screwed in tight and it is. Uh, I'm not going to do a bladder check, blow it up and leave it for 24 hours. I'm not going to do that. This life jacket is only about a year old, um, maybe a year and a half. So it's brand new effectively. Uh, but the thing that does happen to them on a regular basis is vibration over time vibrates the, the cylinders and they come loose. So my life jacket is fine. My cylinder's tight. So I'm just going to put it back together and check the gainer's life jacket. I don't know if it will all work or help. But I've been, uh, Beverly's been uh, varnishing uh, our boat hook. She's still got another couple of layers to do. But I've uh, created a new <laughs> boat hook sack. So I'm just fitting it, seeing if it works. You know me. I always like to use what I've got. And uh, yeah. Another little same project done.